Before we dive into the meat of today's discussion, I'd like to share with you a fascinating result that really underscores what dopamine is capable of in our brains and bodies and underscores the fact that just through behaviors, no drugs, nothing of that sort, just through behaviors, we can achieve terrifically high increases in dopamine that are very long and sustained in ways that serve us. This is a result that was published in the European Journal of Physiology. I'll go into it in more detail later, but essentially what it involved is having human subjects get into water of different temperatures. So it was warm water, moderately cool water, and cold, cold water. Had them stay in that water for up to an hour, and they measured by way of blood draw, things like cortisol, norepinephrine, and dopamine. What was fascinating is that cold water exposure led to very rapid increases in norepinephrine and epinephrine, which is also just called adrenaline. It also led to increases in dopamine. And these increases in dopamine were very significant. They kicked in around 10 or 15 minutes after submersion into the cold water. And I should mention the head wasn't below water, it was just up to the neck. And the dopamine release continued to, to rise and rise and rise and eventually reached 250% above baseline. Now, what was interesting is after subjects got out of this cold water, that dopamine increase was sustained. And I know nowadays many people are interested in using cold water therapy as a way to increase metabolism and fat loss, but also to improve sense of well-being, improve cognition, improve clarity of mind. You know, there's something really special about this very alert but calm state of mind. That seems to be the one that's optimal for pretty much everything except sleep. But for all aspects of work and for social engagement and for sport, that highly alert but calm state of mind really is the sweet spot that I believe most of us would like to achieve. And this cold water exposure done correctly really can help people achieve that state of mind through these increases in dopamine that last a very long time. So I will later detail the specifics of that study, what it entailed in terms of how long the variations that different subjects experienced, as well as how to limit the amount of stress hormone cortisol that's released as a consequence of the cold water. And we will also talk about compounds, supplements that people can take in order to increase their levels of dopamine should they choose. 